Today I'm following up on an episode I made in July about Lebanon's economic problems. Because, not to be a hipster, but I was talking about this one before it was cool. So let's get started with the question on nobody's mind. What's up with the Lebanese currency? Their pound has taken a real pounding recently. Let's start our story last year when protests in the street led to the entire government retiring and being replaced by a government of experts. Spoiler alert, that team of experts did not pan out as bland. Really open third time's a germ on this one. The main point of contention was many citizens were fearful of an impending currency crisis. They could see the tsunami coming from a distance and the only sensible solution seemed to be the resignation of the prime minister and bringing in the eggheads. Just a small independent technocratic government. So why was everyone convinced that their currency was about to collapse? Well, they were running out of American dollars and hadn't yet mastered the art of large scale counterfeiting. You can print new Lebanese pounds, but unless you do business with Uncle Sam, your supply of dollars won't change. So how does a country get US dollars? You can either export items to America, we pay in greenbacks, or have people in America send money home through remittances and then deposit those dollars in local banks. So how do you lose US dollars? Well, either you buy things from America, we only accept US dollars, or your citizens take dollars out of the banks and hold it in cash. Unfortunately, Lebanon has consistently imported way more than they've exported, so they've been hemorrhaging dollars there for decades. They were really banking on you sending your grandmother that New Year's check. Unfortunately, over the last year, their dollar supply has diminished as economic activity has slowed and the remittances from Lebanon's vast diaspora dwindled. So you're the Lebanese government and you're watching the number of American government controlled dollars shrink. What can you do? Well, There are three major options. You could limit people's ability to withdraw dollars from the system. We'll convert that to pounds and then you can take it out of the bank. You could limit your imports from the outside world to essentials or else say you are going to have to pay for all that in Lebanese pounds instead of dollars. Or lastly, you could offer more money for people to save their dollars in banks. Back in November of 2019, the government solution was to have the central bank increase interest rates on dollar deposits and insist that bank deposits were safe and the government would not enforce official capital controls. I will say, when your government has to come out and assure everyone, hey citizens, don't worry, you can continue to have access to your money that you saved, generally a pretty huge red flag. Unfortunately for Lebanon, at this point in the story, we're still laying out the first dominoes. Remember this next point because it is going to be a consistent and huge theme when things really start heading south. People deposit their money in commercial banks, you know, like Chase or Wells Fargo. Those banks deposit their reserves in the central bank. Most of the commercial bank's central bank reserve deposits were in dollars because of those higher rates. Got it? That's going to be on the test later. So the central bank was saying that they would not restrict commercial banks access to dollars. Unfortunately for the Lebanese citizens, their commercial banks weren't really jiving with that new message. Commercial lenders introduced their own haphazard restrictions. Some banks are controlling how much money a customer is permitted to send overseas, while others are limiting the amount of dollars that can be withdrawn in cash. Yep, a clog opened in the cash pipelines where banks were essentially telling people, wow, look at all these dollars you have here in savings. You can't have them, but here's a printout of your receipt so you can feel rich. Informal capital controls remain in place. Cash points are giving out money, but limited amounts per day and only Lebanese pounds, not US dollars. It was all only slightly bumpy sailing until early April when a major crack emerged on the glass floor that everyone was standing on. In a real good news, bad news move, the government said, we've worked on an agreement with the banks and you'll be able to take your dollars out of your bank account again. Woohoo! 
just sign here and try to ignore this novel of small print I attached to the back of this contract. People were able to take their money out of the bank if they converted their dollars to a local currency at about half the exchange rate. On April 6th, a deposited dollar could net you £2,600 from the bank, while its real world value is about £3,500. Now, This would be the equivalent of your bank, after months, finally letting you take your dollar savings out, while saying, ok, you can take out your money, but each dollar you take out will give you 50 cents. Not just any 50 cents either, but 50 cents worth of a soon to be worthless blockbuster stock. Better sell it quick. Turns out savers were in for a penny, but not in for a pound. Seeing the writing on the wall, a bunch of people took the deal, got local currency, and immediately bought dollars on a currency black market. You heard me right, there are legal currency dealers in Lebanon. Hey, you want to buy some cash? I've got a dime bag right here. Nah, this ain't that weak European currency. This is that strong American green that'll get your savings high. So what was the rush to buy all this American currency at the actual exchange rate? I mean, you're not swapping a quarter for a dollar on these back streets, but rather four quarters for a dollar, or sometimes even five or six quarters for that dollar. Well, in America, we buy gold when we think a currency's value is going to fail. But in most of the world, the United States dollar is that safe store of value. Holding Lebanese pounds in April was like holding a Toys R Us gift card the last week their stores were open. Just give me something for it, it'll be worthless in a week. A week after that peg was shifted, black market prices for dollars hit an all time high. So why did the central bank provide this offer? At the time, people weren't sure, but it quickly became apparent that, simply put, they were out of dollars. Ten days after that policy was announced, on April 16th, the Prime Minister of Lebanon announced that depositors' money evaporated in the months before his formation of government in January. It played like a live action version of that famous South Park scene. Well, that's fantastic. A really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest and it's gone. What happened was, savers put their dollars into banks. The banks deposited those dollars in the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve lent the dollars to the government, and the government had exchanged those dollars for pounds so importers could buy foreign products. It was all like 2008, except that it isn't the real estate default, it's the federal government saying, we can't pay back these loans. If you'd saved dollars in your banks, well, you had two options. You could either let your savings sit as theoretical money in a spreadsheet, or convert your money into pounds and buy dollars on the black market. It was so bad that Lebanon had to start setting aside dollars to ensure that they could keep importing food and medical equipment. At this point, the house of cards had fallen and people were watching the fallout, wondering how to fix the situation, and most importantly, figuring out who to blame for it. The political elite, the central bank, and the banking sector are still arguing over who is responsible for bankrupting the state. Glad we got our priorities straight on this one. Yeah, June was not a very productive month for the Lebanese government, but we did get to see the prime minister and the head of the central bank both doing hour long news interviews about how corrupt the other was. And unfortunately, they both had really good points. To local investors, it was raising more red flags than a Soviet invasion, so their local currency continued to fall to record lows as people dumped it for any asset they could buy. In the week before the explosion that rocked the world of Lebanese politics, the debate was between two solutions. In true reality show fashion, two diametrically opposed forces had to come to an agreement in order to win a cash prize of 10 billion US dollars plus access to an additional $11 billion in dollar loans. That's right, it's time to play the blame game, brought to you by Partisan Politics. Let's meet the contestants. First we have Bachelor Number 1, a man who first became the head of Lebanon's central bank the same year I was born. 
Riyad Salame. 27 years, huh, you know how to stick around. What do you have to say to the judges? Not if the central bank funded the state. We didn't spend the money. We need to know how the money was spent. The central bank doesn't have the capability for oversight. This is a campaign against the central bank and particularly its governor. Ooh, someone's gunned him for that first impression rose. His defense is, we didn't spend the dollars Lebanese citizens put in their savings accounts. We merely lent it to the government who probably wasted it. Now this is a great summary of exactly half of the story. While the central bank wasn't spending money, they sure were good at losing a lot of it. The central bank has incurred losses of more than 40 billion US dollars, mainly due to the so-called financial engineering operations it began conducting in 2016, and which boosted its reserves. Remember how we talked about the central bank paying a higher interest rate for dollar denominated reserves? Well, those interest dollars were coming from somewhere. He defends these actions by saying he was essentially the guy in the Titanic with a bucket bailing out water. Hey, the band's still playing, we have time. He couldn't solve the problem on his own. You'd need government reforms and a recovering export based economy for that. But what he could do was, quite literally, buy the government time to implement those reforms, which they didn't do. Alright, so now to bachelor number two, former Lebanese Prime Minister Hassan Diab. What do you have to say to the judges? The central bank is either incapable, absent, or directly instigating the dramatic drop. Yeah, if you thought Donald Trump was hard on Jerome Powell, the Lebanese Prime Minister is consistently accusing the central bank of sabotaging the government by deliberately devaluing the pound. He focuses on the central bank's decision to require local banks to convert cash withdrawals from foreign currency accounts to the pound, saying that decision sucked dollars out of the market, driving up the black market price, as well as panic amongst depositors. His argument is, you shouldn't have given me that money, you should have given it to the depositors instead. Sure I spent it and now can't pay it back to you. But come on, you're the banker. You should have realized how risky an investment I was. If you had given it to the people, we could have deferred that hyperinflation until we ran out of dollars again six months from now. These two dueling perspectives have made a bailout deal nearly impossible. The central bank sees it as an imperative for the government to use its remaining cash and assets to pay back the central bank so they can pay the regional banks which can give that money to the depositors. This would essentially continue the process going on in decades in Lebanon of a back and forth dollar flow between the central bank and regional banks, buying time for some eventual mythical reformer to come along and fix all of their problems. Now I suspect you're going to have to raise the dollar interest rates even higher to get that flow to be a two way street again though. On the other side you have Prime Minister Diab, whose plan is to claw back sums which have unlawfully escaped the country and claw back dollars spent funding excessive interest rates and dollar accounts. Similarly, large depositors would take a haircut on their deposits. He also proposes austerity measures limiting benefits and government employees. And in his proposal, he points out the disturbing side benefit that the poverty generated by these cuts will make imports less popular, meaning that dollars will stay in the country. So were these two contestants able to come to an agreement to win that 11 billion dollars? Weeks of discussions with the International Monetary Fund for much needed aid have not made any progress. Ooh, so close. Now to the judges to see if anyone got eliminated this week. We need to be part of the people. That's why I declare today the resignation of this government. Oh man, that intern on the dimmer switch really nailed the dramatic game show lighting. Well, former Prime Minister Diab, thanks for playing, but you've been voted off the island. Now, if you think that the head of the Lebanese Central Bank is the winner of this competition, well, he might soon end up facing very real judges. 
The Lebanese Central Bank is currently under audit to determine how many assets it has left to be passed on to depositors, and some things are turning up. The Central Bank was hiding huge losses in order to keep commercial banks confident and holding their dollars there for huge interest rates. Yeah, 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 we'll give you a 100% interest rate for your dollar savings. Oh, you want to see your double investment? Well, I can give it to you in pounds. Similarly, it was found that during this period, he shifted almost 100 million US dollars of his own money out of Lebanon and into offshore companies. Yeah, I'd start searching for that immunity idol if you want to make it to next week's episode of The Blame Game. As always, on The Blame Game, everybody lost. So how is Lebanon planning on making it out of this crisis? I have no idea. I mean, they just threw out the entire government. Until they get some new leadership and a new plan, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you want to watch a related video about Lebanon's bond crisis I made 3 weeks ago, click here. Thank you to my patrons for helping me put out my videos, and remember to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.